Well, uh, the rape of Lucretia is set in a kind of ancient uh, Rome that's under occupation. And we look at the soldiers who are away at war, and on the home front we have uh, Lucretia and her serving women. And what happens is that uh, the men have a bet, the men have a wager, that their wives are faithful or unfaithful. And this leads to uh, a terrible event that happens in the second act where Tarquinius arrives at Lucretia's house and says he has to stay the night and ends up in uh, this terrible uh, sexual attack and the repercussions that follow to do with uh, fidelity and how faithfulness can be destroyed and uh, Albert Herring. Albert Herring is a comic opera that Britain wrote with his friend Eric Crozier who was the first director of Peter Grimes and it's based on a story that Eric Crozier found of Maupassant, a French writer and the story is about a village in France where Albert Herring, no chaste girl can be found to be the May Queen, the carnival queen at the May Festival and so in the end they decide to uh, give the role of May King, newly created, to uh, a boy who works in a local shop. Now in the Maupassant what happens is that he gets a taste, his first taste of liquor, having been much impressed by his uh, domineering mum, he gets a taste of liquor. And then in the end, in the Maupassant, that leads to his rack and ruin. And in fact the, the Maupassant story begins by somebody seeing a wino on a street corner and saying that is the May King. However, in the Albert Herring story that we have from Crozier and Britain, we have the fact that the drink leads to liberation. It leads to Albert being able to throw off, uh, he cuts the apron strings, as it says in the libretto. Uh, so he's able to uh, get away from the ties that bind, and he rebels against this very repressive, uh, small rural community and the, uh, the rules there, and uh, finds freedom, finds his. Uh, his sense of self. So it's a slightly different take on the Maupassant nice story. to see the two pieces together. Um, in, uh, I mean, Britain wrote The Rape of Lucretia. It was premiered in 46 at Glyndebourne, and then the Albert Herring happened in 47 at Glyndebourne the year after. So they were written fairly close together. So I think that, uh, you know, there was a sense that he wanted to get away from this tragic world that he'd been in, and the next thing he wanted on his list was to do a comic opera. How do they work together? Well, it, for me, it's about the fact that it's a chamber opera. It's effectively this genre that Britain invented. Uh, the instruments we have are a quartet with some extra instruments, but it's not a big orchestra like he had in 1945 with uh, Peter Grimes. And the wonderful thing about seeing the pieces together is to see how brilliant Britain was about using this economy of means. So he has small forces, but he marshals them magnificently. So although he only has this small orchestra, we have, in the comic opera, we have tremendous sounds, new sounds. We have harmonics on the violin which represent whistling. Uh, in The Rape of Lucretia, we have this uh, uh, tremendously scary bit where uh, Tarquinius is approaching Lucretia's bedroom, and that's just done with untuned timpani. But somehow Britain was able to use this economy of means, so small forces and plenty of imagination.